about CT renal angiogram? How useful is it? Very gold standard. Yeah, it's better than catheter angiography as well. Because with catheter angiography, if you understand, you know, you're putting a catheter in, then you're engaging the renal artery. Uh, if there is an osteal stenosis, that can be missed with a catheter angiogram. Um, also, if there are many patients have more than one renal artery, and sometimes those are missed on a regular aortogram as well. So, a CT renal angio, because you give intravenous contrast and then you opacify all the vessels at one time, is the gold standard for assessing number of arteries, status of arteries, extent of narrowing, vascularity of tumors, aneurysms, all of those things are assessed with uh, CETL. So CETL. traditionally when we have a young hypertensive, especially a young resistant hypertensive, we look for renal artery stenosis. And uh, traditionally we ask for renal arterial Doppler. Now the point uh, here he is making is, not only is the CT better than renal arterial Doppler for diagnosing renal artery stenosis, but also uh, uh, real, uh, the ultrasound, non ultrasound, is, it can also miss significantly? No, no, no. So I'm going to qualify this. Okay, CT is the gold standard, but I would still start with a renal Doppler. Okay. If the Doppler is normal, if you have a good person, so every time now that I speak, I'm assuming that the operator is absolutely good, etc., etc. Then a negative renal artery Doppler rules out any relevant stenosis. So you may still have a 20% narrowing on a CT, but that's not significant. So a negative renal Doppler is a very, very powerful um, finding. Then if it is positive, you do a CT renal angio to characterize the extent of narrowing and then take it from there. So renal angio would still be the, I mean renal Doppler would be the first modality.